and uh, as you know there is a lot of uh, you are, you must be receiving a lot of things uh, confusing things on whatsapp on social media and uh, many other uh, platforms and our indian media is also not covering this in any very responsible way and uh, i think that in order to um, bring some clarity on the issue in order to understand why we as citizens of india as citizens of the world should be uh, should be uh, opposing this war should be speaking clearly against this war should be speaking clearly against us and nato expansion in the region um, and should be telling the indian government uh, not to take the kind of wishy washy position it is taking but rather to tell the modi government that they should do two things one is to clearly tell uh, the uh, russian uh, government and vladimir putin the president of russia to withdraw the troops from ukraine and to stop this uh, absolutely uh, senseless war immediately and at the same time we should uh, tell the indian government that there are 20000 uh, indians as well stuck in ukraine uh so you know when uh, you see all the right wing people on um, the far right in india the hindu supremacists in india they are um, celebrating the russian war as though it is a war game on indian uh, whatsapp and uh, twitter and uh, facebook and so on we should tell them shame on you because uh, ordinary people of ukraine are being attacked uh, they are being bombed uh, the city of kiev is being bombed and along with the people of ukraine there are 20000 indians there as well they also their lives are also in danger this is not a matter to be making memes this is not a matter to be uh, celebrating war as though it is a war game uh, people's lives are at stake and we should be absolutely opposed to uh, this and all wars um the uh, of the 20000 indians who are stuck there 18000 are students and those 18000 students they are saying that look we don't have uh, we are being asked to pay 1 lakh 1 and 1/2 lakhs for a ticket out of there and uh, naturally they cannot afford it so definitely we must hold the indian government responsible for this situation uh, they say we had already given an advisory to the students that they should leave that's not good enough uh giving an advisory is not good enough you should have made arrangements for the evacuation of these young indians who are stuck over there blaming them for not having evacuated themselves on time given the fact that the tickets are so expensive and all of that uh, is absolutely not uh, not right and we must certainly hold the indian government accountable on this issue uh we must also hold the indian government accountable to taking a principled issue a uh, principled stand on the issue what is a principled stand though uh because i can see that uh, you know in uh, people are trying to understand what is happening in india and they are tending to try and take a position based on uh, whether they like putin or not whether they think they like uh, russia or not and they are thinking oh russia is uh, america is against russia we are against american imperialism we know america is an imperialist country america has waged wars and so if we are anti american surely we should be pro putin or pro russia or whatever it is that is not a principled way in which we take positions in which we should be taking positions whether you are a left somebody on the left or whether you are a citizen of india citizen of the world anywhere um, the simple principled position is that uh, russia is a um, powerful country it is bombarding a smaller neighbor of its uh, it is uh, it is bombing it without a an immediate uh, uh, it, it certainly should not be bombing uh, bombing ukraine and uh, it's simply wrong to be uh, bombing a country in this manner and we should here stand very clearly it's very easy to take this position because we need to see what ordinary russian people are saying we need to see what ordinary ukrainian people are saying just because you don't like a particular government does not mean that it is okay to bomb the people of that country. particular government iraq uh, even if uh, you thought saddam was a di- dictator just as it is wrong to bomb afghanistan under the pretext that oh you don't like the taliban uh, that it is a, it is simply wrong to bomb a uh, ukraine irrespective of what you think of the politics of its government and we'll come to that later um but uh, we'll come to the politics of the various actors concerned here but 
just let's understand this thing. Let us also celebrate the fact and salute the fact that there are very courageous citizens in Russia right now uh, uh, who are on the streets protesting the war that is being waged by their president, by the Russian president. Uh, it is not easy to protest in Russia. Such large protests have not been seen in Russia for a long time because Putin is known for crushing dissent, for crushing any form of protest, for even uh, locking up or even, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting opposition leaders killed. Uh, so basically, it is an extremely courageous thing that there are thousands and thousands of Russian people across 24 cities who are protesting uh, in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. If people in Russia can do this, surely we should be doing it too. Tomorrow, if you feel the same way, tomorrow in Delhi, there's going to be a protest from 12 onwards, from 12 noon onwards, starting at Mandi House up till Jantar Mantar. Please join this peace march and uh, oppose the war, ask for an end to the Russian war on Ukraine, Russian invasion of Ukraine, ask for an end to NATO and US uh, expansion and meddling in that area ask for the Indian government to evacuate all Indians and to take a principled position against the Russian war on Ukraine. So those that's happening tomorrow. If you want to stand with the Russian people who are protesting, we can do so in India. And I encourage you, uh, wherever you are in the country, to organize similar marches. Uh, now let's come to some of the other issues involved here. Um, uh, one thing to understand, I, I was speaking to someone who knows uh, Russia and uh, the former USSR extremely well, who is a scholar of the area. And uh, she was telling me that uh, it is difficult to underestimate uh, how close the relationships are between Russians and Ukrainians. So for those who are confused at seeing these huge Russian protests, you should know that there are any number of Russian families who have family members in Ukraine. Likewise, there are Ukrainians who have family members in Russia. So these are people with very close relationships. So even if there are political differences between uh, the peoples or between the government, they certainly don't want their own people, their own kin, their own family members to be bombed. The second thing is that for anybody who has been a part of the USSR, um, you should know that Hitler's bombing of Kyiv, which is the capital of Ukraine, that, uh, that was a very uh, horrific moment, which is there not only in the memory of the people who were alive then, but even their uh, children and so on. They know this, 4 a.m. Kyiv is, Kyiv is bombed. That is something people remember from the hit, from Nazi bombing of Kyiv. And uh, the, uh, the uh, people of the USSR, the people of Russia, people of Ukraine, they uh, gave any number of sacrifices uh, for fighting fascism. So uh, naturally, when Kyiv is bombed again, this time at 5 a.m., and that too by Putin, that too by Russian, uh, naturally, the people of Russia are opposing this. They are protesting this in a big way because they are connecting it with that terrible memory. And they are saying that there is no excuse whatsoever for bombing Ukraine. OK. Um, the other thing is, let us look at some of the uh, instances, some of the pretexts that are being given in support of this war. Uh, so what is uh, Putin saying and what are other global players saying? What is the NATO saying? What is the US saying and so on? Let's examine that for a minute. Um, we'll examine that in some detail, but before I get there, let me just uh, put this clear very clearly that this is not about a simple story. You, you can't keep looking for the good guy here and say, okay, uh, America is always the bad guy, so Putin must be the good guy. Uh, America or, or Putin is the bad guy, so America must be the good guy. I know that both this kind of propaganda is happening in India, and I would appeal to you not to be part of these kinds of camps in this way. I know that uh, in various parts of India, it is being said that, oh, the left is always speaking against US imperialism, and look, now Putin is the bad guy here, so um, you know we should, we should always have been in support of America and American wars. No, this is not a choice like that. You cannot say that I'm against America, so I will be for whatever wars uh, or imperialist uh, imperialist ambitions Putin has. 
Uh, just because I am against Putin does not mean that I have to support the US and NATO. The US and NATO themselves have a lot of responsibility for landing Ukraine in the situation, the crisis that it is in now, because NATO uh, knows very well that Ukraine cannot be a NATO member because uh, for some, some country to become a NATO member, all the uh, you know, the constituent members have to agree uh, to that. Germany has consistently been vetoing uh, Ukraine's membership in the NATO. And so that wasn't going to happen anyway. For them to be talking about it, talking it up, talking it up, was deliberately provocative and deliberately an attempt to uh, create an instability in that region. And uh, basically, uh, also, they have been trying to expand NATO in that region, among other countries and so on. So that is absolutely wrong. We are absolutely we should we should clearly say that the NATO expansion in that region is adding to uh, the potential for conflict in that region. It is absolutely a provocative factor, and it should uh, NATO should withdraw from there. NATO presence anywhere has not led to peace. Okay, so let's not fool ourselves on that. If anybody thinks that these countries having uh, being able to show NATO as their uh, big brother in answer to the Russian big brother. Uh, and that is going to somehow protect them. That is not going to happen. It is not happening now, and it has not happened in the past anywhere either. NATO has been very much part of. Um, not only that, we should notice that uh, you know there are several countries here who um, have either are part of EU or want to be part of EU. They haven't been that quick in giving uh, these countries, you know, say Bulgaria and Romania. Uh, look at them, they have want, you know, they are complaining that we are members of EU now, but we don't have equal status. Um, Ukraine has been asking for EU membership, they haven't given them EU membership. So look at the double standards here that you're so quick to say, come, come, come join NATO, uh, which is a military alliance, but you are not that quick to uh, offer them, you know, membership in EU. Uh, not that I'm in support of, I don't think we should be in support of EU membership here and NATO membership either, because these are things that will um, invariably stoke uh, conflict and war in that region. But um, uh, let, us, let us now look at uh, the other things that are being said here. Uh, Vladimir Putin is saying firstly that, look, uh, he is doing this war to liberate the Russian-speaking people of Ukraine, whom he claims are being oppressed in Ukraine and all of that. Is that true? Well, uh, it's not. It's very simple. Even uh, the president of Ukraine right now is a Russian-speaking uh, person. He is a Russian speaker, he's a Jew, so he's not a new Nazi. His own family members have been killed in the Holocaust, and he is certainly not. There may be a lot of things wrong with his uh, politics, including his uh, attempt to woo a NATO and all of that. And you can see that, uh, you know, uh, he is standing there now without uh, uh, NATO support, and he is complaining that NATO hasn't come to the rescue. Uh, well, uh, that was bound to happen. Uh, friendships with America and the NATO tend to work out that way because they don't tend to come to your rescue. Um, they're not really interested in that, uh, and they're not going to stick their necks out for you. So, uh, well, uh, uh, that's one thing. This, but the main thing here is that he is a Russian speaker. And as you can see by the response in Russia, this isn't about some terrible hostility or lasting hostility between Russian speakers and Ukrainian speakers. Okay, uh, Rather, there are some Ukrainian nationalist forces, uh, so-called Ukrainian nationalists, they're far right. Uh, neo-Nazi type of forces, which try to stoke this kind of um, sentiment and all of that. Likewise, there are similar forces on the Russian side, which in the name of Russian nat nationalism, they call Ukrainian people a cancer. They try to say that Ukrainians are uncivilized. Ukrainians are, they don't, Ukraine doesn't deserve to uh, exist as a country. It should be bombed out of existence, etc., etc. So on both sides, you find some uh, versions of far-right racist rhetoric. Uh, but uh, that is certainly not the sentiment on the ground between Russian people and Ukrainian people. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is uh, that uh, uh, even if it is about those two provinces that uh, Vladimir Putin announced uh, the independence of, um, well, uh, that in, that if you're going to, uh, uh, you know, in those regions, uh, it is not as though only Russian speakers live in those provinces. 
Russian speakers, non-Russian speakers, they live together, they have uh, a good relationships together. So Russia is actually trying to create a divide over there which does not exist. It is trying to foment that divide and uh, that is of course a very, very dangerous thing to do uh, because that also will lead to conflict, will lead to killings, may lead to massacres uh, and uh, all of that. And that is a would be a very terrible thing if that were to happen. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, secondly, we should know that uh, Russia has already in 2014 also uh, invaded uh, and uh, annexed uh, Crimea, which was uh, which is also which has also happened in 2014. And uh, we need to keep in mind here that when uh, Vladimir Putin said said till a day before this attack, he said that he is keeping his troops on the borders of Ukraine only as a peacekeeping measure. Well, this war is not being waged for the sake of peacekeeping. That is very clear. War is war and uh, the war should stop. So it's uh, completely uh, simple to say this and we should say it very, very clearly without any ifs and buts that this is not a war anyone can support. This is a war uh, which should stop immediately. Stop bombing Ukraine, get your hands off Ukraine. Um, the second thing is uh, which uh, Putin is saying is he is saying that uh, Ukraine is full of uh, neo-Nazis. Ukraine is a neo-Nazi state. Uh, it's a fascist state. And Ukraine is also, uh, you know, pro-NATO. Uh, NATO is uh, going to use Ukraine as a launching pad to attack Russia and all of that. So, uh, as I said already, that uh, uh, Ukraine membership of NATO is actually very, very unlikely because Germany has opposed it all along. Uh, that's one thing. Of course, uh, any NATO expansion there, any attempt by these attempts by NATO to recruit Ukraine on its side and all of that, that we, uh, sh we should absolutely oppose. But what is all this about its being neo-Nazi and all of that? It's very clear that the, uh, the Ukrainian government is not neo-Nazi. There are neo-Nazi forces in Ukraine, just like there are neo-Nazi forces in almost all, every any, any uh, European state right now. For that matter, we are here in India and we have our version of Nazis in government here. Would that be a justification for the Indian people being bombed because we have a Nazi in power? I don't think so. So likewise, whatever you, uh, uh, for one thing, the Ukrainian government is not a fascist government. Secondly, even if it was, that wouldn't justify the bombing of, uh, you know, Saddam Hussein being a very cruel and despotic ruler who had waged uh, who had uh, killed sections of uh, the population did not mean that that justified the bombing of Iraq, right? So uh, likewise, I mean, there is simply no justification for bombing Ukraine and uh, all of this. The uh, second thing he's saying about this uh, neo-Nazi and he's saying I'll denazify uh, Ukraine, that's actually uh, very, um, um, you know, complete, completely propaganda because uh, there, uh, the, the president's Former presidents in Ukraine, leaders of Ukraine who have uh, played FTSE with the neo-Nazis have also done so with America and have also done so with Russia. There have been in fact forces within Russia also who have been part of uh, you know, neo-Nazi forces inside Russia who were part of the uh, attack on Ukraine in 2014. And they have in fact spoken about that. A couple of them who refused to be part of it because they uh, were of this thinking that, uh, you know, it's all one great, great Russia and Ukraine is, doesn't have a separate identity from Russia. That is a far right thinking, denying the independence of Ukraine. But uh, they said that, well, that means that if Ukrainians are Russians, we shouldn't be going and killing Ukrainians. So they didn't go, but they also exposed the fact that they were uh, encouraged to go, they were incited to go. So this is absolutely not a simple thing that all the Nazis are in Ukraine and all the Ukrainians are Nazis and that Putin is uh, the savior of democracy and the anti-fascist fighter. Sorry, this isn't the USSR going to war against Hitler. This is not that, all right? Uh, the second thing is that uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to far right policies, Putin's own very close aides, advisors, uh, you know, there are uh, individuals there, there are people there, there are forces there that are extremely far right. Putin is extremely popular with the white supremacists and the far right all over the country, all over the world. And even in India, uh, a, a man who is considered to be Putin's brain, uh, this guy called Dugin, 
he is very popular among the rss here and he has been known to say that look putin stands for getting rid of this whole uh, idea of liberal democracies ruling in the world we need the ancient civilizations to rule the world and we don't need democracy which means that uh, russia is this great civilization china is this great civilization india is this great civilization narendra modi is a representative of this great civilization uh, naturally so hindu supremacy is a part of that uh, great civilization kind of narrative uh, so he is this uh, sort of uh, you know russian golwalkar over there who is uh, uh, certainly uh pretty close with putin and uh, says this kind of thing so things are not simple you have a lot of far right and nazi type thinking on uh, the russian side as well so this is not a excuse for uh, invading uh, it certainly does, doesn't justify the invasion of ukraine uh the other thing is that um, when it comes to um uh, when it uh, when it comes to war or uh, when it comes to the russian policy you should listen to putin's speech uh, find extracts of his speech find a transcript of the speech he gave uh, bef- just before he waged this war and pay very close attention to it so he talked all uh, all the stuff about denazification and all of that and many pointed out that the president of ukraine himself uh, has family members who are f- were jews who were killed by the nazis and uh, he himself is someone who has often spoken about his family's closeness to and his uh, sense of warmth with uh, for the soviet partisans the russian partisans who fought uh, the nazis so you know obviously uh, this talk of denazification and all simply doesn't hold water but there's another very interesting thing which those especially on the left should pay attention to those who stand for the rights of nationality should pay attention to because um, what uh, vladimir putin said is he said that ukraine did not uh, ukraine is a part of russia ukraine did not have any should not have ever had any independent existence as a separate nationality as a separate republic and now as a separate nation so how did it come to be how did ukraine come into being he said ukraine came into being because of the bolsheviks and specifically he referred to ukraine as vladimir ilich lenin's ukraine okay so he said uh, well uh, they came into being because, so it's a historical mistake that happened because of the bolsheviks and it's time to wipe that historical mistake out that's what he said and he said quite clearly that uh, oh ukraine wants to decommunize itself and all of that well uh, we are fine with that but uh, i'll show you decommunization we'll show you what real decommunization means because that won't stop halfway so what does he mean he was clearly saying that ukraine's identity as a country should be wiped out which means ukraine should be forcibly annexed uh, into russia right so this is what he said what he will actually end up doing whether he will succeed that's another thing maybe the protests in russia that are going on now will be able to stop him from doing this stop him from doing to ukraine what he's already done to crimea so uh, perhaps that's the case but whatever it is it's important i think that uh, his mention of lenin what does that mean i think it means to us to remember that when it comes to uh, there may be many mistakes that the soviet union made but certainly when it comes to the rights of nationalities when it comes to the basic principle that uh, you should respect various nationalities and you shouldn't force this grand russian uh, chauvinism on uh, the smaller nationalities you shouldn't be the big brother and call everybody else little brother because i am seeing this kind of language even in uh, the writing of some of the left papers and so on global left and that's very wrong to talk about this big brother little brother business um to talk uh, to actually see nationalities as equals this is something that lenin certainly stressed uh he was especially uh, vocal against and uh, very sharp against uh, what he called greater russian chauvinism greater uh, and uh, uh, he he warned that greater russian chauvinism would lead to the downfall of the ussr the whole name ussr union of soviet socialist republics meant that uh, the each nationality could be a republic and it could have an equal status with others so russia would not be the big brother over there that was at least the idea that was at least the concept that was the principle and uh, well even putin is acknowledging that principle even though he's attacking it um remember that those in russia today who are out on the streets they are being taunted for being anti war and they are being called leninists they are being called leftists why because putin has in the past also said that lenin was the one who uh, basically um 
you know, advocated the anti-war position, the Bolsheviks advocated the anti-war position in the First World War, and uh, he was, he mocked them for that. So basically anyone who is anti-war right now is being just like in India, you have uh, those who are protesting being called urban naxals and anti-nationals. That is what is happening to the people in Russia today who are coming out in thousands on the streets against the war that their country is uh, rulers are waging against, their country's ruler is waging against Ukraine. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, I think I have covered most of the points. I'll just encourage everybody to please organize protests against the war, organize protests against Russian invasion of Ukraine, tell Russia to leave Ukraine alone and to move back from Ukraine, uh, tell NATO to move out of the region and stop trying to meddle in the region, tell US and NATO hands off uh, this whole region, um, stop trying to recruit for the NATO in that region. Uh, wherever the NATO goes, uh, there is bound to be uh, conflict. So please don't, uh, don't, uh, don't advocate that. Uh, say that as well, and say that uh, we should be, uh, we should be telling the Indian government they should take a principled position. Right now, you can see that the BJP and the Sanghis they are uh, celebrating uh, Putin's war on uh, social media, but they are also a little confused because on Putin's side they can see Russia, so they are not able. To, uh, they, they, they can see China. So they're not sure they're caught in a cleft and they're not sure what to do they, you know, but your government cannot have this kind of a confused position. Uh, uh, we know that India has all kinds of defense deals with Russia, but that's not the point. Those who are telling us, oh, who cares? It's not our war. Why should India speak? I'm sorry. Every war is uh, the war of the entire world now. Everybody, you know, the very fact, it's not a joke that people are talking about World War Three possibilities and all of that, okay? Because uh, this is a nuclear armed state. Remember that when the Soviet Union was dissolved and Ukraine became independent, Ukraine said, Ukraine said, uh, Ukraine said, uh, Ukraine uh, agreed to uh, give up its whatever nuclear uh, weapons it had. Uh, in exchange for, uh, you know, the right, uh, the, the protection from any potential Russian aggression and all of that. So today that stands broken uh, and Russia has uh, nuclear weapons. Other European countries have nuclear weapons. Any war in that region could lead to a nuclear war. Putin has been threatening that he'll go to any extent and threatening nuclear war. Nuclear, of course, America has nuclear war, uh, nuclear weapons. Nuclear war uh, can result in the entire, you know, it affects all of us. Nuclear war can wipe out the planet. It can wipe out all of humanity. So uh, it is very much our business, not just because Indians are stuck in Ukraine. Uh, it is very much our business to speak up against war. Uh, we should not rely just on the rulers of various nations to prevent war. Uh, speaking up for justice, speaking up for equality and dignity for all countries, even when they are smaller, speaking up against this kind of big brotherly kind of bullying and uh, uh, waging war on your neighbors. This is something uh, speaking, uh, speaking up against uh, this whole uh, rhetoric of rebuilding the Russian empire of the Tsarist era and undoing the Leninist uh, you know, uh, respect for various nationalities. This is all something we should oppose. We should oppose US and NATO warmongering and uh, we should absolutely call out the lie uh, that the US and NATO are saying or uh, Putin is saying about being, you know, being interested in peacekeeping and so on. Uh, so call out all these warmongers and speak up for peace and uh, certainly stand in solidarity with the Russian people who are risking so much by coming out on the streets to protest. Stand with the people of Ukraine, uh, stand with the uh, ordinary citizens of Russia who are uh, marching on the streets in support of the people of Ukraine. So uh, tomorrow, if you are in Delhi, please join the protest demonstration, anti-war demonstration that's going to be uh, held. Uh, start at uh, 12 noon from Mandi House up till Jantar Mantar. And wherever else in the country you are, please uh, we encourage you to organize on your own small, big demonstrations, but certainly find a way to show your solidarity with the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia who are opposing the war.